Okay, we have three things that we want to talk to you about today. Um, we want to talk to you about uh, the um, agreement of subjects and verbs in, in Greek um, first, and then we're going to talk about um, the infinitives, how you form them, and what they mean in Greek. Uh, of the, we're going to talk about present and aorist infinitives. We'll talk about why they're called those in a moment, too. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to make questions in Greek. Okay? So, agreements. Um, in, in English, the verb only has one funny ending. Okay? Um, that's in the third person singular. So, when the subject is he or she or it, we add an S to the verb. Okay? So, the, the verb agrees with the person. Um, of the subject, if it's a if it's a he, a she, or an it, or an external subject. So you say, the king eats, or he, or she, or it, eats. Okay. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it's all the same form. But in Greek, where you have three persons and all and two number and the numbers singular and plural, and they're all different, um, you have to. It, it's more complicated. And in fact, remember we talked about this um, that a verb like pempe. You can make that into a, uh, you can put a period after it because it means he or she or it is sending. Mm -hmm. And even you, you, a Greek would assume that it means he or she is sending it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you can assume an object in Greek, um, a pronoun object. So, so we, we need to make sure that when the sub, that you understand that any, every Greek verb form that's a finite verb that has person has an implicit subject. That's that's the pronouns of the person. I in the first person, you, he, she, or it in the third person, we, you, and they in the plural of the first, second, and third persons. Okay, um, that's that's simple enough, I think, and we we can understand how we adjust the form of the verb depending on what the pronoun subject is. When we have an explicit subject like the king or elephants, or you know, any, anything you can imagine, then most of the time, not always, but every single, pretty much every single time, the verb is going to be third person. So you should say the king eats, or uh, elephants rumble through the jungle, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the, the verb in Greek has to correspond to the number of that subject, it has to be singular. If the subject is singular, like the king, or elephants, it's going to be plural, okay? Um, so that's pretty straightforward too, okay? But there's one weird exception, and that's the thing on the bottom of the blackboard that Lacey's prepared there. That's about neuter plural subjects. If the subject of a verb is a neuter plural noun, then the verb, okay, this is very weird, the verb is not singular, plural, but singular, okay? Um, so so the, the standard example is is Aristotle's sentence about what defines animals. He, he said, living things, or animals, run. Okay? Mm -hmm. In English, um, that's a plural ending. Okay? But in Greek, you say, living things runs, because the word for living things is a neuter plural noun. Zoa has the alpha ending of neuter plurals. Okay? So, tadzoa, living things, treche, is a third person singular verb. Um, it's tricky to remember. The reason for this is that originally that ending, the, the neuter plural ending, was not a singular or a plural ending. It was an ending for a collection of things, a single collection of many parts. So that's why the verb ending that goes with it is singular, even though now it's a real plural. It's about archaism and language. All right. So the second thing we want to talk about is infinitives. Um, and Infinitives in Greek, the book gets a little bit messed up about this, so you have to be careful. The book at one point says that infinitives have tense, and then it backtracks on it and says, no, they don't. Um, but infinitives in Greek, all infinitives, and these are two are no exception, only have aspect. Okay, remember? So aspect is about the kind of action that something is. Um, unfortunately, we've inherited a grammatical terminology that doesn't know about aspect. So what the book calls the present infinitive is really the infinitive of the imperfective aspect, okay? Um, and, and so it's describing, it's an infinitive that describes um, an action that's ongoing. 
whereas the aorist infinitive is the one that doesn't commit as to whether the action is complete or incomplete. Okay, Belize is moving out of the picture here. <laughs> um, so, so if we if we're going to translate uh, um, an infinitive, a Greek infinitive like to teach, okay, the aorist infinitive would be to teach, okay. That's the that's the one that gives you the least information about whether the process is ongoing or not. The pro proper way to translate a present, a so-called present infinitive, which is the aorist, uh, uh, which is the the uh, the imperfective aspect infinitive, is to be teaching, is to be in the process of doing it. All right. So that's the meanings of the infinitives. Um, what's, what about the form? Well, for these both of these forms, we have what we can see uh, already. We have uh, for the present infinitive, we start with luo. The form starts with lu, that Oops. is the stem. Whoops. <laughs> We're in the dark. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is fun. We come back. There, there we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've only got the bottom and not the top. Oh, shoot. Can it's you, so weird, yeah. You gotta wave your hand at that thing. There we go. All right, great. Sorry, Belize. <laughs> All right, this is a crazy system. Okay, so we have Lu. That's the stem of the imperfective aspect. Okay, and we have epsilon i out of no. That's the infinitive ending. So that means to be releasing. Okay, um, if it were pi deo, it would be pi deo ain to be teaching. Right. In the aorist aspect, we start with Lu, and then the s a. Okay. And then we get an I, okay? So, and notice, Belisi did the beautiful thing. She put the accent on it. The infinitive, the present infinitive has recessive accent, okay? But the aorist infinitive has non-recessive accent. It, in this case, it gets a circumflex because the U of Luo is a long U, okay? Um, so the ending, however, is just an iota. So it's Lu plus S-A, the sign of the aorist, right? We should write that down, that the S-A suffix in all the aorist forms we've seen except in the third person singular is the sign of the aorist, okay? And that may be a way to remember it. S for sign, A for aorist, okay? <laughs> a little tricky That's mnemonic hard. device, okay? <laughs> so Luain, to be releasing, Lucy to release. Pideloin, to be teaching, Pi Dao Sai to, to teach. No person, no number, okay? Only one form. Remember, these are the non finite verb forms. Mm -hmm. So that's what they are. Um, the way we use them in beginning Greek is with certain verbs. So let's talk about that for a second. There are verbs in Greek and in English that have attached to them, so to speak, an infinitive. So if you take the verb want or, or like or choose, okay, um, it, it expresses only part of a verbal idea, and there's a little hook, so to speak, implicit in it. So you, you say, I want to eat potatoes for lunch, okay? Mm -hmm. So you get an infinitive to eat. Um, I like to eat potatoes for lunch. I choose to eat potatoes for lunch. It's all those sorts of things, okay? Um, and there, these are called complementary infinitives because they complete the verbal idea. It's complementary with an e, um, not 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 a compliment like what a nice child you are, but complementary with an e. Okay, from complete. So they complete, express a complete verbal idea that is the finite verb he or she or it or we or you or they want or wants, and then to do something. Okay, so we get the verb uh, to order. Okay, in this lesson. Kaleo, so I order you to do something. Um, it's completing the verbal idea. All right. Uh, last thing is, uh, how do you make questions in Greek? Basically, all you really need to do is, Belisi, add a question mark at the end. Just semicolon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the question mark. That's a little weird, right? Remember this. So that's at the end of this of the of the sentence. Okay. Um, there's no special word order. You know, in English we say, I, I like potatoes, and you have to reverse things. You have to say, do you like potatoes to make a question? Mm -hmm. In Greek you just, just add a question mark. There is, however, a little word, ara, with a circumflex over the alpha, okay? 
um, that sometimes Greeks use, not often, okay, to indicate that the question, at the beginning, it comes first in the sentence, to indicate that a question is coming. So it's like the Spanish thing, um, that you of writing an upside down question mark at the beginning of a question, right? Yep. That tells you that a question is coming, and you put the question mark at the end. So uh, 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 ara is exactly like that upside down question mark. Okay, and you can't translate it because we don't have one. All right. Yep. That's it. Bye bye. <laughs>